For years you've heard me come here and say, it's too soon for political action. We need philosophical education first. Well, that's still true, but I am not going to repeat it tonight. Instead, in an unusual move, I am going to come out for political action. <clears throat> for the first time, I am urging you to vote in November. I think it might make a difference if you do it the right way. And by the right way here, I mean the following, which I'll quickly elaborate. Vote Democratic for the presidency. Vote for any Democrat nominated by his party for the presidency, period. In other words, do the most possible to get George Bush out of the White House. <clears throat> The record of George Bush is truly disgraceful. It is filled with evasions, flip-flops, compromises, and outright uh, surrenders to evil, foreign, and domestic. And you know it all as well as I do. Taxes, read my lips. Civil rights, he endorses new legal burdens on employers after swearing to veto such a bill. Uh, trade with Japan, he was Orrin Boyle's escort and chauffeur to Japan and is urging the Japanese to cut their productivity. Russia, he's intent on giving away a fortune. Israel, he is to that country the most hostile American president ever. The Gulf War was the only time in history that I know of where a country's leader was so uncertain that he took months to gain approval for a war by a vote from all the nations on earth and even then, still feeling guilty, quit that war 24 hours early and thereby lost everything we were allegedly fighting for. <clears throat> Posing as a conservative, Mr. Bush picks only the worst of the conservative views, such as anti-abortion and legislation against obscenity. <clears throat> The symbol of his attitude to free speech is the Salman Rushdie case. Rushdie, as you must know, the victim of the Ayatollah Khomeini's death decree, risked his life recently to come out of hiding to the United States and beg in the name of the principle of free speech for Americans to stand by him. He knew, as everyone does, that a word from the administration to Iran, a word backed by the real threat of action, would end his nightmare and reaffirm the right of men to think unmolested by brute violence and maniacal religions. What reception did he get from the administration? Marlon Fitzwater, who is the White House spokesman, said, and I'm quoting from the Times, he, quote, blithely dismissed Mr. Rushdie's visit to Washington as nothing more than an author on a publicity swing, quote, doing book tours and things that authors do, unquote. Can you conceive an evasion of this dimension? Margaret Tutwiler. I mean, the names could have come from Atlas, Chuck. <clears throat> <laughs> the State Department spokeswoman said that no senior officials of the United States would meet with Mr. Rushdie because, quote, such a thing could and possibly might be misinterpreted, unquote. By whom? Well, presumably by the Iranians. Well, how would they misinterpret? They'd think Bush was going to take a stand, defend an individual's liberty, do something. And the Bush administration is anxious to show that it can be counted on by thugs around the world to look the other way every time. Now, in my youth, I used to think that the liberal Republicans, like Nelson Rockefeller, were the worst bunch in politics. I don't think that anymore. George Bush is the worst of the liberals combined with the worst of the conservatives. <clears throat> and yet he is regarded by many people as a true conservative, and all his offenses become in their mind charges against capitalism, which will taint it for decades to come. This man must be removed from office, in my opinion, if there's to be hope for the future. Let me quote here from an unknown 34-year-old lawyer in New Hampshire, <clears throat> interviewed by the Times as he left the polling booth 
on primary day last February. Quote, I have just never been more confused. I don't even want to say who I voted for because my thinking was so unclear. The only thing I know is that President Bush has done an absolutely abysmal job and he cannot continue. What I tried to do was figure out the best way of helping him lose, unquote. And I say, amen. That is precisely my stand. <clears throat> now, the best way of making him lose is not to simply refrain from voting, but to vote for the Democrat. When you Republicans, as I assume most of you here are, when you refrain from voting, you say, in effect, it makes no difference to me who wins. So your non-vote, in effect, counts once. It's one less for Bush. But if you vote for his opponent, your vote counts twice. He doesn't get it, so it's one less for him, and his opponent does, so it's one more for him. This way, you positively help to defeat the incumbent. <clears throat> now, it's not enough to vote for any non-Bush candidate. You have to vote for the man who seems to have the best chance to actually win the election. And that eliminates voting for splinter candidates who have no chance of winning, such as Ross Perot or Pat Buchanan. Now, besides, neither of these men are what the country needs, and neither would do any good. If you think I'm wrong in this, please ask me about it in the question period. <clears throat> to me, there is nothing to do but vote for the Democratic nominee this year, whoever it is. Clinton, it looks like, or Tsongas, or someone worse, even if it ends up being Jerry Brown, <laughs> the Reverend Jackson, or Mario Cuomo. <clears throat> now, you will object that such people would be even worse than Bush. I don't think so. Because not one of the Democrats is popular. And besides, whatever they try to get away with, there will once again be some opposition in Congress. There will be Republicans who have seen the defeat of Bush, who know they cannot count on the conservatives in the country to back them no matter what they do, and who as opposition members have the right and the duty to rebel, play partisan politics, scream their heads off, and slow the White House down. Whereas if Bush gets in again, he will propose the same things in a little more moderate form as the worst of the Democrats, and on top of that, he will have no real opposition. The Republicans risk their careers if they fight too hard against a president from their own party. In effect, my analysis is like this. Republicans out of power at this juncture are better for the country than Republicans in power. In power, they will promote the growth of statism. Out of power, they may promote governmental paralysis, which we desperately need. <laughs> <laughs> And there's another point here. Several economists are expecting some kind of economic disaster in the next years, whether a depression, a runaway inflation, or who knows what. As a lifelong Republican, I would be happy to see this disaster strike when the Democrats are in the White House. <clears throat> they richly deserve it, and it would be an albatross around their party's neck for decades, just as the 29 Depression was around the neck of the Republicans. The Republicans have now sunk to their lowest point ever, and it is crucial to get them back onto a semi-plausible path by letting them see that they can't get away with the leadership they are now offering. Perhaps if Bush is defeated, they will learn from it and offer us someone better in 1996. But please don't ask me who it should be. I have never heard of the man so far. <clears throat> Let me say that what I have been telling you about the election is Peikoff's recommendation, not Ayn Rand's or Objectivism's. A philosophy does not back candidates and does not vote. <clears throat> there can be legitimate differences among people of the same philosophy in regard to political tactics and strategy. So please don't be unduly influenced by my point of view. Think it over and judge independently. I have merely told you how I propose to vote in November, if I can. I know that I can vote for Clinton or Tsongas, bad as they are. But if Jerry Brown or his equivalent 
is on the ballot, I admit it will be hard. <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, I am not sure that I can physically bring myself to do it in the voting booth. But if my arm can rise to pull the lever, I will do it. <laughs>